So let's talk about the indoor project and what they are actually seeking to do. And one of the first things we need to know is that indoor is a revolutionary science. Second is that indoor has a product that is already working. Now that thing again, they have the people who actually developed the science are the ones who own this company. If you go through the profile of these guys, you will know that you are not kidding. So let's talk about Endo. So it's based on social physics. And you might be asking, okay, what is social physics? Social physics is very simple. It's basically when you combine big data and, anal and analysis with Ma the mathematical laws of biology. So you want to consider things like machine learning in the deep level. What is machine learning? Machine learning is basically fit for things like machine. Okay, this is a machine. This is an oil ring. This is how much movement can take place and all that. This is how to respond. It's static. When we talk about data uh, on deep learning, deep learning is also static. It's not very dynamic but when you talk about social physics social physics is dynamic it can be programmed with 10 minutes and other so let's see some of the stuff the technology i've told you about that the innovation the industry validation they worked with um guys like walmart mastercard coca-cola and all that they've received an award from uh, at the econo uh, World Economic Forum, we received the DAP, uh, DAPA Network Challenge Award, then the McKinsey Award person. Then they have a very solid team. It was incubated from the MIT labs, and then the double effects and all that. So you may be asking, okay, what is the problem that they are seeking to solve? One of the things we need to know is if you want to actually, the cost of building infrastructures, like say for big data and all that, is very cost. And this limitation makes it only, gives gives a kind of competitive advantage to the companies who can afford the money, who can afford to pay the workers and all that. So what Endo is seeking to do, Endo is saying, okay, this technology, or this science we have, machine learning, deep learning and all that, or data science in itself, it's limited. That is one of the things. Secondly, it's very, very costly. Why don't we bring in a new form of science where we can actually help with predictions and reactions and all that and make it democratic? That is, those who are providing this data can receive a lot of reward. And then, what is democracy for the people and by the people, right? That is why they bought all these stuffs. So, so here's a basic outline of the of the uh, protocol. Canonic data representation. Every data that is contributed to the endo dot uh, coin uh, network gets transformed into a knowledge sphere. And then there is a separation of data. This enables the data owners to integrate their data in full or in part with the endo network acting as an autonomous stakeholder in the ecosystem focusing on the maintaining the quality of the data controlling who we have access to it and benefiting financially from the uh, future value it provides then there is the um, separation of engine and then another thing again that makes this stuff is there is this decentralized exchange uh, story execution so they said that you already know that blockchain has limitations like uh, storage. So, why not bring in the officials of the education of blockchain and then the uh, storage stuff, they take it to uh, the Amazon uh, cloud. And then data sovereignty, we can actually mark data and say data, this data is private or this is really public and offers account, account, accountability and censorship for all. I want to bring this to your attention. So there were some 
use cases that this platform actually had. As you can see, this is this, uh, the, the study they did with Coca-Cola joint study where they compared over 20 uh, million uh, correlated abnormalities. And this is the report from the CTO of the Coca-Cola company. And this is how do you use this technology to actually analyze some Twitter, uh, some tweets. Now, in the recent terms, 15 million tweets metadata will be provided to the Endo engine as raw data for analysis. In addition, the customer revealed the identity of 50 Twitter accounts known to be known to be ISIS activists and were contained in the input data and tested Endo's ability to detect an additional 74 accounts that were hidden within the data. Endo's engine completed the task on a single laptop in only 24 minutes. Identifying 80 Twitter accounts as lookalikes to the to the provided example, 45 of which, which is 56%, 50, uh, turned out to be part of the list of the 74 accounts. Importantly, this provides an extremely low force alarm rate so that the customers could easily afford to have human expert investigate and find it. And here is this statement from the CIO, Chief Information or, or Investigative Officer of the Israeli Intelligence Corps. A revolutionary concept and truly technological breakthrough. The results that are presented are unmasked by any competitor. So, with this uh, platform, the world of analyze things from phone calls, from Twitter handles, and all that, and be able to predict who and what is likely to happen. So, as a person, your data, when you provide your data, that is, you submit your data to the data prediction engine, you will pay a certain cost. And then in the future, when insights are actually gained from your data, you will be paid for such and there's one of the unique thing and then the system consists of um, the prediction engine so this uh, defines the language that that is based on the prediction of the data to the future space of partially overlapping clusters however endo will facilitate assist and form in the development of new prediction engines aiming for the creation of an ecosystem that is comprised of multiple layers, providing complementary capabilities, boosting performance, accuracy, and increasing reliability. Then you have the uh, a predefined prediction and request for predictions. So maybe you, you request for predictions, they bring it, and it could be available for pushes. And this is the roadmap. The roadmap is very, very interesting. So at the start of, uh, maybe after the ICUs, the tokens will be used to power transactions that are occurring on the platform. And then the next step they will take is that they will expand their ecosystem organically by growing the number of community, uh, growing the, the, uh, the community of catalysts. So catalysts are basically those who will be developing various applications in the system. And then the second phase is that the endo will become a modular app platform on which catalysts can expand the prediction domain through the power blockchain. So how will they do that? They will do that by um, to enable this endo is empowered by an open-ended stream of micropayments to authors of reusable software component that can be, be perpetually on the combined and recombined to create an ever expanded library of useful and highly customizable query the apps so they will be having libraries and classes for deployment and redeployment of decentralized applications now another thing again is that with time endo will become the premium development platform for entrepreneurial coders and blocks and enterprise looking to build data rich web and mobile products on blockchain thus 
Si vous cotez une machine, les mouches et sofa, ça c'est pour les tours of high speed. So there comes the need of why are we building or partnering or working with the blockchain technology? So there was an article that was written that talks about why you want blockchain-based AI. Now we've seen things like um, Alessa. Now, when Alessa is being trained, one of the things you have to know is that Alessa is like a search engine. And we've seen cases where uh, Facebook or Google or any of these uh, uh, platforms, they have to comply with maybe uh, uh, jurisdictional laws. And there are certain contents that could be available to certain persons in certain location and would not be available to another person in another location. Now, let's say this, this as I highlighted. If there is is about gathering story, analyzing as much data as possible. Then who is in a poor position to win? That is right. What will happen? The guys in US, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google. Then the guys in China, Badu, Alibaba, then Tencent. And the way they fortune is so the multinational compressions. So they will be the one who we have access to this data and when they have access to this data there are three questions that will be answered uh, four, sorry four questions the issues of accountability how do you know if you're actually accountable the issue of authenticity that this data they're actually providing to you is not misleading because you want to base prediction on the always how do you ensure, how do you know that this thing is not biased you know when, when um a certain entity is the one when, the, when there is a, cent, a central body bias comes really uncommon. So I think the way I say blockchain in the upcoming years is blockchain may uncall in such a way that uh, things like the magistrate courts or law in general will be decentralized. So no more will there be a judge who we, a human judge who we come and take and president of our case. No. This is not be decentralized. And how do you know where accuracy? So, Endo provides all that. The system is the, uh, Endo can actually provide 10 sensitive um, predictions that can elapse within a certain amount of time. And not only that, anybody can actually see that. And then it's going to be zero bias. It's going to be accurate. And then another thing, another interesting thing about the Endo platform I like is the network effect. So you might be asking, look, what is network effect? So network effect basically means the effect that happens as there is awareness or there is increase utility of such a system so the more users have been added to the endo network the lesser the cost of using the endo system that is very amazing and then that thing again is that the more data providers have been added to the system the more the accuracy of these predictions the other thing again is that the more prediction engines we have, the more there will be increase in the efficiency of these predictions. And then the next video will be continuing end up in the next video. So guys, those of you who have not actually subscribed, subscribe because we'll be talking about the part two of India. I don't watch it. It will be very good there.